move in our midst yes. uh, in the way you, you see fit to do. Don't do what I want to do, Lord. Yes. Do what you want to do. God, let us hear from you today. I thank you for it. I want to say thank you to everybody who donated, who gave it to work, especially. Uh, I want to thank you to Hogwild Ministries. Appreciate it. They're out reaching to Amen. the prison. Yes. And we just prayed, you know. <clears throat> I went out in that trailer the other day, Ronnie, and just prayed over all those boxes. I just said, God, touch those men where they are. Yes. yes. I just, they need it. <clears throat> you say, well, they deserve to be where they, they, they are, but think about this. Are you where you deserve to be? Oh, yeah. Amen. God's a God of mercy. That's right. Yes. Luke chapter 2. Verse number 8. I really want you to pray with me about January. I think God's speaking to me about some things He wants to say and do. I just really want you to pray with me. Verse 8, now there were shepherds in the same region living out in the fields. Don't you see that? They're, that's where they live. Yeah. And they were guarding the flock at night. Suddenly, everybody say suddenly. Yeah. An angel of Adonai, an angel of the Lord, stood before them. And the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were absolutely terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. See, we could preach right there. I mean, if we just go and preach for an hour right there, but I'm not, I promise you. <laughs> for behold, I proclaim good news to you, which will be great joy to all people. A Savior is born to you today in the city of David who is Messiah of the Lord. And the sign to you is this. You will find an infant wrapped in strips of cloth. We call, uh, King James calls them swaddling, swaddling clothes. And he will be lying in a manger. And suddenly, there's another. See, there's two suddenlies here. I just want to say you need to be looking for suddenly. You need to be anticipating yes. You've been in your life going through your thing, but you need to anticipate that there can be suddenly that will come into your life. Hopefully situations. Yes. Suddenly, a multitude of heavenly armies appeared with the angel, praising God and saying glory to God in the highest and on earth. Peace, goodwill to men. I was thinking about this, and, I, and this song came to me. And I'm going to sing it right now. We'll sing it in just a few minutes. But the song is, you know it, but it's, it came upon a midnight clear. That glorious song of old, from angels bending near the earth to touch their hearts of gold. Peace on the earth, goodwill to men, from heavens, all gracious King. The world in solemn stillness lay to hear the angels sing. It, it's, you know, that's, that song to me kind of wraps up this moment. This moment to me is one of the most beautiful and blessed moments in recorded history. I, I would say in recorded, not recorded history. This moment when the Son of God left the throne of heaven and came in a lowly manner, in lowly surroundings, and to show the significance of his birth. Now watch this. This gives me hope right here. To show the significance and the meaning of his birth, it was not to kings who he came. It was not to scholars behind their lofty 
pedestals of learning. No, it wasn't even to the high priest who went before the Lord. But it was to a people, a people who had a very hard, difficult, but a very serious occupation. Yes. That's who he came to. That should speak to me and you today. Huh? Yes. I, I'm just, I'm a nobody, right? That's right. <laughs> Look at somebody. Glory to God. That would tell me I'm worthy. Yes. That would tell me I am somebody. Yes. That would say to me, Amen. you are worth the angels declaring your birth. Yeah. Yes. Glory to God. He came to the shepherds. Now I know many of you have heard this probably a sermon on this. And the shepherds were, were described as the outcast of society, right? You've heard yeah. that. And, and in many, many cultures, they were the outcast of society, the lowest of low. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, just uh, you imagine the worst, most despicable occupation, and, and that's in many societies. You know, in Egypt, they would not have anything to do with the Jewish people because they tended their flocks. So they were outcast in many societies. And the belief that the angels appeared to them first makes a lot of sense, right? But there's a truth to it that's even better than that. See, these particular shepherds were in Bethlehem, which is not really that far from Jerusalem uh, as we know it today. It's a city outside of Jerusalem. Not very far. Be like going from here to Atmore, you know, or going from here to Uriah. You know, it's yeah. just not far to get from Jerusalem to Bethlehem. Mm -hmm. Many, many modern day scholars believe that these particular shepherds were tasked with a very, very important job. That is to tend the flocks that the sacrificial offerings would come from into uh, for the temple, right? So get this. Here they are, these Levites, out in the fields, out in the fields tending the flock for the sacrificial lambs to go to be sacrificed. And when these Lamb of God, glory to God, Amen. came forth on this earth, it was to them it was told. You know what? You know what? They could have said, hey, I'm giving you a pink slip because you're out of a job now. You don't need to watch those lambs because of the lamb that was slain from the foundation of the earth Amen. has just been born over here. Right. And you'll find him in this manger. Yes. Glory to God. Glory to God, so it's very significant that he came to those particular shepherds. And that particular night, yes, it was a hard job. Yes, it was looked down upon many. But their job was to prepare the sacrifice for the temple. Yes. And God said, you ain't got to do it no more. <laughs> they didn't know what was going on. And they were scared. The angel, did, the, the angel didn't go to the church leaders. He came to them. Yes. And he's the true Lamb of God. Amen. But he came. Amen. Somebody say he came. He came. Amen. he came. Listen. He came to them and the condition of the world when he came was full of hate, mm. was full of hurt, yes. was full of abuse of every kind mm -hmm. when he came. When he came, there was sickness on the earth. There was death on the earth. There was pain. There was bondage. There were wars. There was famine. There were hungry. There was bitter and painful poverty yes. when he came. I'm glad he came. That's why he came. Yes. <laughs> because there was hate. Yes. Because there was pain. Because there was death. Because there was sickness. Because there were wars, because there was slavery and bondage, 
That's why he came, and I'm glad he came. Amen. But when he came, that was still going on yes. in the world. When he came, it did not stop. That's right. Are you here today? Yes. That's right. But he came. Somebody say he came. He came. He came. He came. It may not have stopped in your life yet, but he came. There still may be sickness in your life, but he came. There still may be pain in your life, but he came. Glory to God. There still may be bondage. You may be bound to something in your life, but I got news for you. Jesus came. Glory to God. He came. And he came for you. And he came for me. He right. came to heal the sick, to raise the dead. He yeah. came to open the blinded eyes and to set the captive free. Yeah. He came, glory yeah. to God. Yeah. Jesus came. Yeah. In the midst of all this, he came. Yeah. Why? Because he is the light of the world, yes. glory right. to God. Hallelujah. Jesus spoke to him and said, I am the light. Of the world. Yes. And the one who follows me will no longer walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. John 8, Matthew 12. He's the hope of the world. Yes. And in his name, the nations shall hope. Yes. He's the light of the world. That's why he came. He's the hope of the world. That's why he came. Yes. He is the eternal salvation for mankind. Yes, amen. Glory to God. Amen. John 4, verse 13, 14. Jesus replied to her, Everyone who drinks from this water shall get thirsty again. Hmm. Look at this. But whoever drinks of the water that I will give him shall never be thirsty. The water that I give him will become a fountain of water within him springing up to eternal life. Yes. He is the eternal salvation. He is the hope of the world. He's the light of the world. And he came. Yes. He came into your low valley. Man. He came to your deep, sorrowful valley. He came to lift you up out. Yes. He came. He came in the midst of the fiery anger that you have because you hadn't been done right. Yes. Amen. Ain't no lie. You've been abused. Ain't no lie. Somebody's done your own. Ain't no lie. This is no lie. Somebody has turned their back on you. Somebody has pushed you aside. Somebody has stabbed you in the back. Somebody has lied on you, cursed on you. That is no lie. But he came to soothe the anger that's welled up within you and to put forgiveness in your heart that you can't find nowhere else. Amen. 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 He came. He came to take the way of the hurt of abandonment. Yes. I know a little bit about that. Thank you, Lord. I know a little. Oh, my goodness. I was so angry. I was so hurt. I was so mad because of what people had done in my life. And I didn't even know it. Oh, I would just well up with anger. And, and I'd be, everybody would say, hey, uh, he, man, that guy's uh, he, he's easy going. But don't you ever set him off. When, he go, when you set him off, he goes crazy. You better get out of his way, because that's what it would boom. It would hit me. Man. Then I would be so you know, surrounded by family and friends, and and should have been so happy and so glad, but all of a sudden tears would come to my eyes, and a big lump would come to my throat, and I would I'd well up with hurt and pain. But he came. He came. Man. He got right down in the middle of it. And he pulled out that, that anger. He pulled out that resentment. And yeah. He pulled out that pain. Because he came. He came, glory to God. Let me tell you something. He has come for you today. Amen. 
You've been dealing with it, some of you, this yeah. week, this month, because, <laughs> you know, it, this, this time of year just brings it on. Yes. Because this is, everybody says, it's time for family, this is time for friends, it's time for joy and celebrate. Yeah. And you can't because you you at odds with somebody. Amen. You want to, but they don't want to. Yeah, yeah. You want to, but that hurt and that pain is still there. And it just comes and you don't know what to do about it. I'm telling you today that he came. And if you'll give it to him, if you'll let him be not just a baby in the manger, but the King of kings and the Lord of your life today, he will take it away. Listen, it's a free gift. All we have to do is receive it. I was saved. I had my name written in the Lamb's book of life, but I was walking around with all of this stuff in me until one day I didn't have to do anything on it but receive that gift. And he set me free. Amen. Boy, God. Amen. I said earlier, you need to make memories because one day, memories is all that you will have. I'm yes. so glad I learned that a long time ago. Yes. Now listen to me. This freedom that I'm talking about is not predicated. It is not bound up to what somebody else does. You know what? They still might not speak to you. That's right. That's all right. That's right. They still may be mad at you. That's okay. You say, I can't handle it. Let him give it to him. Receive from him. And I promise you, you can have some joy. You can get a little peace out of the matter. You can get help. <laughs> Glory to God. He will help you. Do you believe me today? Oh, yes. Yeah. There's a couple of things I want to do today. I hope everybody, when you came in, you, there were two things that we wanted you to have for this morning. And this is a portable communion. And then this little candle. Did everybody get one when they came in? They, they were right out there. If you need one, you need, here, here you go, son. Anybody else? We'll serve you today. Yeah, I need one. Everybody got one? Thank you, Lord. You have one? Praise the Lord. Thank you. First thing we want to do is we want to take the Lord's Supper. I thought you did that at Easter. Well, you do it as often. That's why you do it. You do it as often. And listen, at his birth, without his birth, remember, and his virgin birth, without that, there is no holy sacrifice. Yes. So we're going to take this. Now, this is uh, not that hard, but you can be frustrated if you take the little clear piece of plastic off first. And that gives you this piece of styrofoam. <laughs> but this is an easy way to do it. And this is a uh, this is a social distancing exactly. way to do this. Because we're not serving you. And I appreciate our church because we don't have to tell you what to do. You know how to social distance and you know how to so anyway, then you take this other piece and you just kind of go ahead and fold it back. And then you'll be ready. Amen. First Corinthians 11, verse 23. For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it. Everybody break it. And said, this is my body, which is for you. 
do this in remembrance of me. So everybody know this. His body was broken for you so that you be healed, you be saved, and you be delivered. He gave his body. Those shepherds out in that field didn't have to worry about a sacrifice anymore because the sacrifice came. Why don't you take it? In the same way, he took the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as, this is why, for as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Now, before you drink, you think, I want you to close your eyes and think, this is somebody I need to forgive. You can do that right now. You can forgive them right now. Just go ahead and do it. Now take a drink. Man, I'm affirming you. <laughs> the preacher drank it. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> yeah, y'all have to watch me. You have to watch me. Remember I said he's the light of the world. Now we're going to do this. So I want to, uh, Brother Peter, if you could kill those lights back there. Because it just, it looks better. The lights off. He came as the light of the world. Now I'm going to light yours. And remember last year, we, uh, some of you remember, we talked about this. If you'll let your light shine, now I'm going to light yours. And you, share, you get the, you get it going with everybody over If you'll let your light shine, then your light, he is a light and he is in you. When you let your light shine, you can light somebody else's light. Yes. When you get it lit, I want you to stand. Hold your light up. Hold it up. Let it shine. There you go. You'll be able to go back on Facebook and see how pretty this is. Amen. Now keep your light up. Keep your camera up. I'm going to sing. I'm going to leave it. Oh, come, all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. Oh, come ye, oh, come ye to Bethlehem. Come. 
light of the world. Yes. Yes. The hope of the world. Yes. The eternal Savior of the world. Yes. We thank you that you came. Yes. Not only to give us eternal salvation, yes. but to heal our hearts. Yes. So that we would have peace and goodwill toward one another. Yes. You're the healer of families. You're the restorer of the breach. Yes. You cause those who are separated yes. to be brought back together. Yes. Oh God, there's nothing too great for you. Yes. Now Lord, we thank you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on and praise him one time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Glory to God. You can just see what I see. Yes.